Hey! Yo, hey everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review. And first and foremost, happy 4th of July to everyone out there that lives in the States. Uh, I love 4th of July. I think it's one of my favorite, if not my favorite holiday. It's probably my favorite holiday with Thanksgiving coming second. As I get older, I start to like holidays like 4th of July, Memorial Day, Veterans Day, a lot more than Christmas and such. But, uh, yeah, 4th of July is it's just a great day where we can celebrate our nation and sit back, relax, and maybe have a barbecue, maybe go see fireworks. I live right off a lake, and they do fireworks all the time, so it's great for me. So get some friends, enjoy yourself, celebrate our nation. Uh, and to all those people out there that do not live in the States, um, have a happy 4th of July anyways. It's always good to um, celebrate your country in some way, shape, or form. And if you don't live in America, celebrate your country anyways. If you live in Canada, celebrate Canada. If you live in Mexico, celebrate Mexico. If you live in um, England or Germany, celebrate England or Germany. You, you get the point. So anyways, let's jump into my comic load for the week because this day is Wednesday and Wednesday is comic day. Now, before I actually get into my comic load, I do want to point out that I did pick up Batman Earth 1. I read it last night and I read it like at, oh god, I got home at like 1 something and I'm like, well, I don't think I'll just read Batman Earth 1. So I read it and it was not a wise idea to read that late. Not 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 for the book. I mean, for me, I I'm ridiculously tired. But um, I'm not going to be talking about this in this video. I'm going to do a separate video for this. Uh, my feelings on it, and we'll go for there on that. Um, but let's jump into the reviews themselves. Starting things off, we have Detective Comics issue number eleven. So Batman is going up against this villain called Mister Toxic. Interesting name. Um, and basically, uh, Mr. Toxic is connected to this professor. I forget the professor's name. Um, obviously, it really didn't matter much to me. But he he's basically has this connection to this professor. What connection it is? Hmm, it's a little sci-fi. Uh, very sci-fi, even for Batman. But uh, basically, Batman has to take on Mr. Toxic and make sure he doesn't get near this professor. Make sure that he doesn't have any interactions. Because, like I said, there is a connection. I don't want to say what the connection is. And it feels like everyone's kind of working their own angle while this is going down. Uh, will Batman be able to take out Mr. Toxic? Will he be able to unravel this mystery? Um, or will the evidence come to bite him in the bum? We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, let's get into the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. Uh, good. Uh, the art is great as always. I love Tony Daniels' art, and it's great art. Um, the action in this is really nice. There's some good fight scenes in here. There's a lot of punch and kicks are thrown around. Um, I really do like that. Uh, Mr. Toxic, as campy of a character as he is, I kind of like him. I like his costume, and I kind of like his motif. Um, it, it stands out. It's, very, again, very campy, very golden age-ish, but it still looks cool. Uh, and the story itself is actually kind of interesting. Bad. Uh, the major bad in this is it's way too dialogue-y. There's a lot of dialogue here. I don't know if it's Tony Daniels trying to make the scenes more like a detective story because Batman's talking to everyone and trying to get information from everyone, but it's just too much dialogue for its own good, and I don't really care for that. So the dialogue does hurt it a bit. Um, and I think it's also not the best paced. There's parts where, like at the very beginning, I'm like, whoa, shit's going down. You know, there's a lot of action, a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on, and then well, let's take some time and talk to a professor and talk to Jim Gordon, and uh, there needs to be a balance in the pacing. So I think the pacing got hurt a bit too. Um, on a whole, you know, this was a pretty good issue, and I'm gonna be sad when Tony Daniel leaves. I know not everyone liked him, uh, Detective, and I will admit, you know, it's not as great as say Paul Dini, but. I really do like his art, and I think he tries some different stuff, and that can be commemorated. Uh, of course, he's going on something um, new. He's not saying what. He's doing something for DC. It's like a secret project. And uh, we don't know who's going to be going on Detective. I, I want to throw Paul Dini's hat, uh, name in the hat. So, um, 
On a whole, I'll give this a 3.5. It's an okay issue. Um, not perfect, though. That The dialogue just really did kill it. Uh, let's talk a little bit more Batman with Batwing. So, Batwing has a lot of guys that he has to fight. First of all, he has this dragon, which I believe his name is Long. Um, and he's trying to get some data and information. And basically, he's trying to fight this Long guy while Nightwing gets the information for him. Uh, but... Uh, Matu, uh, Matu, Ma, it's Matu, his, his uh, cohort, the guy that works with him and uh, helps him out. Let me just make sure that I have it right. Uh, yeah, Matu. Uh, Matu's family was all killed in the previous issue. This is stuff we know. Uh, so Matu needs to go deal with it, and by dealing with it, he has to deal with this, this metahuman group. And it kind of all goes to shit, and Batwing does not like it. So, uh, will Batwing find out uh, a way to help out Matu, or will Matu be on his own while he tries to get his, his dead family's bodies out of the country? Uh, just gonna have to wait and see. Good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Uh, the art is really nice in this. I do like the art. I particularly like how Nightwing is drawn. Um, and I really do like the suit Batwing wears, except for, like, the, the weird face mask. It's not bad, it's just not practical. Uh, what I like about the suit is it just has all these gizmos and gadgets. She's fighting this dragon dude, and he's just like, well, I think I'll do this this time. Do, 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 do. And he's like, where did you get this stuff? <laughs> I mean, obviously from Bruce Wayne, but... You never used that before? Light grenades? is like, crazy. Um... The fight scenes were pretty good in this, and they get an introduction to this new group of metahumans led by this guy that looks like Thor, in a way. Weird Thor. Uh, let me see if I can get his name for him, because, uh, again, you know... Oh, Battle Lord, that was his name. And I should have remembered it, because I'm like, this is a cool name, I should use it for D&D. &D. Um, so, you know, it, it's starting to shape up to be a cool, interesting story. And I will give this a 4 out of 5. Uh, this really wasn't any bad in this at all. Uh, maybe it's because we're jumping from story to story to story to story, and it's very, uh, hectic, but, it, you know, four out of five, good issue. Batwing has been a solid series and an enjoyable one at that. I like how he's always traveling across the land. Oh, here we go. Action Comics, issue number 11. So, last issue, I gave a horrific r rating because it was just not good. Uh, will this issue stand up and uh, be good? Or will it, unfortunately, follow the same pattern? Well, you'll you have to wait. Basically, Superman creates a new secret identity. Uh, I think it's John Clark or something along that lines, And he's Fireman. Hey, might as well. Um, I figured that would... I figured being a Fireman would make being Superman a lot harder. Because if there's, like, let's just say there's a fire and, you know, it's caused by a supervillain, you can't just leave your post and go off and become Superman. You have to go take care of that fire. But if you're a reporter getting the scoop, you can still leave and become Superman whenever you want. But that's just me. Um, he kind of consults Batman about this, about how Batman feels about this. Oh, by the way, this is the variant cover. I liked it better than the uh, original because... Someone's on it. Uh, but he talks to Batman about it in, in a nice exchange of words between the two. Uh, and then some weird guy from the future shows up and, yeah, does something to Lois Lane, which is kind of shocking. But, again, this is said in the past, so how shocking can it be? Uh, so, yeah, you know, that's the basic story. There's some new guy with a hood and he's coming after Lois's niece. Although, I don't think it's actually Lois's niece, because Lois only has a sister, and her sister's younger than her. And I don't think her sister has a kid. Uh, so, you know, on a whole, how do I feel about this issue? Uh, good. It had that nice moment between Clark and Superman. Um, and the dialogue wasn't bad. Except for with that hooded guy. The hooded guy was... Ugh. His dialogue was bad. Uh, the pacing was meh. I don't know. I'll give it a. Th I'll give it a three. It, w 
it was better than it was last week. I think the story is a little bit better than it was last week. The big problem I have with action comics is that no matter what you do, no matter how shocking or no matter how drastic, or no matter what story idea you do, we already know what the outcome's going to be because it's set in the past. Oh no, Clark creates a secret identity. We know this new identity is gonna, not going to fly. He's going to be a cop hand again. And I can't enjoy it because of that. It even makes reference in the Superman comic when he goes, well, it's like that time where I created that false identity for like 12 seconds. It's like... I don't know. It's like with what happens to Lois. I don't want to reveal what happens to Lois, but it's like, you look at it, it's like, well, Lois won't die. Come on. She's in Superman. So there's no shock to it. So yeah, three. Yeah, and we're going on to Green Arrow. I can't tell you how close I've come to dropping this. And I might, yes. I'm probably going to give it to issue 12 or 0. To, uh, just to, just, just to say that I did the first year. And after that, probably drop it. You are on limited borrow time, my friend. But that doesn't mean this issue may have necessarily been bad. Uh, basically, in this issue, there's a group of individuals show up and they call themselves the Black Arrows. And they're basically doing the Robin Hood thing. Steal from the rich, give to the poor. That is their stick. And Green Arrow is not liking them getting on their turf. While this is going down, Green Arrow's um, company is going under. It is bankrupting and he, he has uh, no chance to save it. So he has to go to China and get his money back from the, the majority stockholder. Uh, and while this is all going down, he has to take care of the Black Arrows. One of them is actually generally trying to do good. The other one's a psycho-crazy person. So, will Green Arrow be able to recover his company, and will he be able to take care of the Black Arrows, or not? Just gonna have to wait and see. Good, um, I like the concept of the Black Arrows. Someone to rival Green Arrow. Someone to kind of, uh, put his morals and put him to the test. Uh, the, the, the community likes the Black Arrows more than they like Green Arrow because the Green Arrow is not necessarily serving the people as much as he should be. I like the look of the Black Arrows too. The art isn't bad in some areas, but it, it's really good in some areas and some areas is not so good. So it's a give and take. Um, and I, I kind of see that they're trying to go with the rise and fall of Oliver Queen, kind of like what they did in the 70s, make him lose his money and his fortune, become that man of the people. And that's kind of what I think the Black Arrows are, a test, testing Oliver Queen and forcing him to that position. Bad, there is so much political stuff that it just bothers the shit out of me. There's a few things that I hate being talked uh, too much in comics, and that's politics and religion. Not that I have anything against politics or religion, but usually when people do it, they don't handle it correctly. They're extreme in one way, shape, or another. I hate extremists when it comes down to religion or politics. It's just it's nauseating. I respect people that have certain views, but it's, it's like, okay, it's like my friend. He has a specific views in politics, and I, I sometimes I can't just listen to him because it's like all that gets brought up. Yeah, he's so passionate about it, it's, it's hard for him to, to get past what his views are. Um, so I don't like how they threw down, like, uh, communism, 99%, way too liberal, way... It's a, just make the comic. I know they're trying to tie it into Green Arrow's downfall and make him the more liberal Green Arrow or whatever, but it's so annoying. It's so annoying. So, on a whole, I'll give Green Arrow... Hmm. I'll give it a three. Better than it was last week, definitely. Uh, there's definitely problems here, but there was some good ideas too, so I can't, I can't take away from that at all. Let's move on to my good friends, my buddies from college, the Red Lanterns. And I can actually say that because I read Red Lanterns originally when they first came out uh, in Final Crisis in college. So they are my buddies from college. Every review, I will try to remember saying that. My my buddies from college are the, the Red Lanterns. So, uh, we have the best cover in the world here. That's sarcasm. Uh, we have uh, exotic, uh, promiscuous Belize with uh, her, her little leotard riding up her camel toe there. And uh, Fatality with her broken zipper. 
So uh, this is a crazy cover. Anyways, the, the majority of this issue is broken up in three parts. One is Bleez's part, where she deals with Fatality, and actually almost convinces Fatality to join, like, have rage in her heart. Uh, whether or not she's successful on that, I don't want to reveal. The second part is Atrocitus um, using a blood omen, or not blood omen, but a blood ritual to uh, activate his powers to see in the future and basically, you know, figure out what's going on and how he can save the core and how he can find the person that, you know, has uh, screwed it up, which uh, I forget his name. He really doesn't matter. Um, Abysmus. Or something along that line. And the last is Rancor. And Rancor, um, again, trying to, you know, he's alone in the galaxy. But he wants to find a business. And he wants to avenge his Red Lantern brethren. Uh, good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Good. Uh, the story is really picking up, actually. And it's starting to get interesting. Um, I really like how each three direction, uh, each three stories are going directional wise. Uh, Bleez is continuously becoming a better character. Uh, she's psycho. She's crazy. Oh boy, this this woman, you do not want to bring her to a cocktail party. But she is fun. Um, I think Bleez is starting to you know rival Atrocitus as one of the standout characters. Atrocitus is becoming more of a monster than actually a character recently. Um, I like that, you know, the, Gr the Green Lantern animated shows Atrocitus, I think, is a little bit better than the comics Atrocitus. But maybe that's just me. Um, and the art was pretty good in this, too. Although Fatality looked kind of weird and a, a little off, I, I particularly like the moment when her and Belize gets, uh, you know, and they're in the Crystal Dome, and they're having a little fight. And actually, Belize takes off her uh, cowl, and you get to see her hair and stuff, which is pretty cool. Uh, so, on a whole, I will give this a... I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5. I really enjoyed this. A lot of people don't like Red Lanterns, and a lot of people have a, valid, a very valid argument that Red Lanterns, like any other Lantern Corps really can't survive as, a, as an individual uh, comic because, you know, they're based too much on one emotional spectrum. Green Lantern can pull it off because Will isn't an emotion, and they're proactive, and they're defenders rather than um, people that go out and cause trouble. But I actually like the crazy, silly stories that are coming out of Red Lantern. Um, it's a guilty pleasure. I guess that's what I'm going to say. It's a guilty pleasure. But it's a fun guilty pleasure. So, moving on. Um... Next is Animal Man, issue number 11. So Buddy Baker gets his new body, and it's basically old body versus new body. That is the majority of the issue, but it is fun. Um, I won't reveal anything more than that, other than it sets up Rot World, um, which is going to be uh, the big crossover that they're going to do. Uh, these contacts are killing me. I, I kind of just woke up 43 minutes ago. Um... But yeah, it's kind of a setup. Buddy gets a new body, and his powers are a little bit different with his new body. It, they work differently. They act differently. So, um, And I don't know how I feel about how his new powers work. And when he's not using his new powers, I don't know if it's the art or anything, but his body looks a little bit off. And there's a bit of a cliffhanger at the end, which I kind of saw coming. But, well, not that I saw coming, but I, I, I'm not surprised at because of what happened during the issue. Um, it involves the sun. So, uh, on a whole, writing was good. The The fighting was fun. I liked the fighting. The, there was a very tense drama to it. On a whole, I'm going to give this a 4 out of 10. No, 4 out of 5. Not 4 out of 10. That would be horrible. Uh, 4 out of 5. It was a very good issue. Really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. I, I, I think Swamp Thing is a better of the two, but that's just me. Moving on... We have the Justice League International. Oh, we are coming to the end of Justice League International. Basically, it's the Justice League versus uh, Breakup, and it's the Justice League consisting of uh, General uh, August, General and Irons, uh, Godiva, Booster, Guy Gardner, Omac, and Batwing. Yeah. Uh, no Batman, uh, no Fire, no Ice, although Fire and Ice are in the hospital, so... Uh, and they're facing up against Breakup, and uh, who is the who is the, the guy right here that causes so much trouble for the Justice League? Uh, 
Yeah, and it's just fighting, and boy, is it good. Uh, with a nice satisfying ending to it. A nice, uh, in... spoiler alert, um, Godiva and Booster. Yeah. Um, you know, the thing is, is as this comic is coming to an end, and I'm not going to bother going to good or bad, um, as this comic is coming to an end, I'm starting to realize more and more how this team has grown on me. Yeah, they're not the all-stars of the DC Universe. It's not Superman, Batman, Wonder Well, it is Batman, but it's not Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern jumping in there and doing their thing. I mean, we have one big name, Batman, and the rest are all, like, B or C listers. But I've grown to get attached to this team and grown to love this team. Uh, this comic makes good sales. I really don't see why we're getting rid of it. They haven't given me a, a legitimate reason yet. But, as for this issue... Um, I really did like it. It was from the perspective of Guy Gardner. It was a good issue. Five out of five. It's a pity that this comic is going away. Uh, because I really do like the characters. I really do like the comic. Anyways, uh, last two issues to talk about. Uh, first, Earth 2, issue number three. Two things happened in this. Well, three things. <laughs> Uh, one is we get to see Alan Scott become the Green Lantern, and it's done in a very nice fashion. I mean, I guess it was no surprise that his fiance I don't know, would he be considered a fiance? His boyfriend, I guess, um, because he proposed to him, but I don't know if he ever said yes. We, we knew he wasn't going to survive. I'm not spoiling anything for you, come on. Uh, but how they use the tragedy and death for... Alan Scott and make it into the Green Lantern. It was actually pretty good. Um, oh, I don't want to spoil anything. They do something with the ring, which is actually really nice. Uh, kudos to you, James Robinson. Uh, kind of touching. Kind of sad, too. Um, basically, how in Earth 2 it works is the Green Lantern is the, uh, the essence of life on Earth, and there is an essence of death. And the essence of death is embodied in one of my favorite villains of all time. Who makes an appearance at the very end of this. So uh, because there is no Superman. Because there is no champion of Earth. The essence of Earth basically selects. Um, Alan Scott to become the new champion of Earth. Become the Green Lantern. Uh, in addition to that we see Hawk Girl. And I believe it's Kendra Sunders. And if it is that's awesome. Uh, I think Earth 1, I mean, Earth 2 is going to have Kendra Sunders, where the mainstream New 52 world uh, is going to have Shire Hall. Uh, but uh, Kendra Sunders, basically she's teaching um, Flash of Ropes, and uh, the two of them have a little spiraling match, and it, it, it it's really fun to watch. The super Speed Flash versus Well-Trained Hawk Girl. Um, and uh, we get a little tease that the Atom's going to come in for the next issue. Howard, no... Mr. Terrific. Uh, so, on a whole, what did I think of this issue? 5 out of 5. Um, it really was just, uh, again, great team building. Great team building. Uh, which is nice. Uh, you know, I really especially like the stuff that they did with Alan Scott. But the uh, in addition to that, the interaction with Hawker on Flash was just comical and fun. It was good. Uh, and the reveal of the villain at the end was awesome. Good job, James Robinson. Another stellar issue. Uh, now, I think World's Finest came out this week. But I don't know. I might have missed it. I'll go to my comic store tomorrow and check it out. Or maybe I could go today. It's open today. Uh, but the last uh, comic I have is Ozzy Mendez. Issue number one of what? Six? Wow, six. I thought it would be an issue one of four. Uh, yes, Ozzy Mendez, issue one of six. Um, in case you guys don't know, and some of you may not, uh, Ozzy Mendez is my favorite character from Watchmen. I'm not going to go into why, I just love him. I think he's a great character. And the, the basis of this issue, and with a lot of the issues, is his telling his origin. It tells from him being born up to him becoming Ozzy Mendez. You're probably saying, that's a lot of, like, stuff to cram into one issue. They figure it out. Um... Uh, and it's just basically telling him his training and how he became who he did and the, the catalysts that made him into what he is, made him into the superhero. Um, as with the Watchmen stuff, I don't want to reveal too much of the stories because the stories are just so good. 
I'll just give a rating. Um, I am going to go out on a limb, and a lot of people probably won't agree with me on this because maybe it's a little fanboyism, but I will also give this a 5 out of 5. Ozzy Mendez was a great issue because it shows the intellect of Ozzy Mendez, the, 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 the level of training that he goes through, and just how different and unique he is to the world. Uh, I really love this issue. I put it right up there with like Minutemen as one of my favorite. So that was my comic load for the week. Uh, which one was my favorite? Well, you're just going to have to wait and see. I will talk about it in my Andrew Cutter Picks of the Weeks. Uh, which we have a lot of news, like uh, Marvel relaunching their product. And the return of Joker. A little tease there. So uh, at the Andrew Cutter Picks of the Weeks, we will talk about that stuff. Um, in addition to that, we'll have a review of this up either on Thursday or Friday. One of the two. Because I already read it, and uh going to get my opinions. So, I'm going to end this video here. Um, once again, happy 4th of July to all of us all of you in the states and if you're not in the states still have an excellent day okay this is andrew saying peace out for now